hello peeps I am here at home winding down from my day at the office yes it's a handful but I am a mother and not just a businesswoman as I said mother businesswoman and wife yeah three roles in one and the thing is I see where my son is malfunctioning from morning from yesterday evening he started malfunctioning when um, when people share with me Christine in in the West Christine they obey you you know and the kids would be like Miss Christine they obey you no I am saying Don they obey you <laughs> Because I cannot understand this malfunctioning that he's going on with. I mean, he's just the perfect, perfect son. Um, speaking as a mother about a child, not a problem. Um, for years, we have our, I have my credit card. As a child, I could give him his own credit card. That's how perfect as a, of a child he is. You ask him questions, he would answer yes or no, or any que any questions he wants to ask, he would ask. And I mean, he started malfunctioning since last night, and this morning when I'm asking him some question, it's yelling and screaming. So I'm like, okay, I think that you're all bad. <laughs> you spend a little bit too long down West Milan that when you come in, you're malfunctioning because you're either sick or you're shouting or something is happening and because I'm at the age of 50 you know I'm in my menopausal state guys I I am having like a little stress to talk loud or to shout or to scream like my normal self when kids do what they're not supposed to do well this is my adult child here and how do you mother an adult child you can't mother an adult child because you have already mothered the adult the child into adulthood so therefore I am expecting him to behave like normal like usual but I bring him in and he's malfunctioning the child is literally malfunctioning I asked him a simple question did you forget did you use the credit card to its max and forget to put on um the money or tell me to put on the money to clear the amount because i'm charging something and it's down and he and, and it's saying it's declined it's over it's overrated and he actually is dumbstruck he's in silence as if something is wrong with his mouth that cat got his tongue so i'm like this is the same person who is ramping and raving and shouting and now I'm young, carrying on all crazy. And I'm like, what's wrong with you? They obia you? <laughs> so is there such a thing as they obia a person? Can that be? I used to laugh at it and say, this is ridiculous. <laughs> How could you say a person being obia <laughs> Is that possible, guys? You let me know because I've never heard of something like that until I went to Little London in the parish of Westmoreland where you know they're so rampant on this obia thing and they're into this obia thing so much that you start thinking did they obia you <laughs> why you're behaving like that because that's not a normal behavior to me that don't look normal you know so i am just saying what would you do if you're asking your adult son a question and he's being dumbstruck He's not responding. Hmm? Either something is happening to his brain, he's not feeling to answer, or he's malfunctioning. Because it's the first time I'm seeing this behavior in this lad, uh, 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 this young man. Because he's not a boy anymore, a kid anymore. There's no need to rebel because this is two adults to, in communication with each other. It's an adult behavior. So therefore, I expect to speak to him as an adult to another adult because I am an adult. And if we're going to have any rational communication, how can you communicate 
with an adult as as if it's a child ridiculous i think that's just the most ridiculous thing so it has to be he's obiad that's what me think if i'm thinking wrong you just comment and post i said no chrissy no chrissy is so they carry on but as far as i'm concerned he's doing a malfunction and abnormal behavior when an adult person is talking to you and you can't respond you can't even say yes or no or i don't know or maybe duh what's so hard in that stupid it's stupid no it can't malfunction to me so it's me ranting as an, a mother of an adult right because i've never seen this one before and as my counseling and, and, and psychology lessons have taught me that the human development goes through stages so once the child has passed through certain developmental stages of the the child that a child is supposed to pass through then when they become an adult they're supposed to be going through stages of trying to find their purpose and meaning in life and to to bring themselves to actualization yeah so if you're gonna take yourself through those process then there's gonna be a journey you have to go through and if you're gonna go through that journey you want to do it on your own then you need to say so right because there's no need to react in a rebellious way because you have you have already become an adult you have become what the parent have been trying to bring you to become over the eight, 18 years of parenting so if a parent is parenting you to reach 18 or 21 then you're an adult we can't teach you nothing more it done you can now choose to learn more from your society or from the actions you see your parents doing because now you can understand the adult world of which your parent has been a part of from you were born because you know we should be adults before we have kids yeah so therefore it's you, you will be having some kind of um stress trying to understand the, the uh, what adults have to go through to be in the adult world and try and rationalize your experiences into the adult world to see how you're gonna adjust yourself and fit in in an adult sphere but all the yelling and shouting as if you're a hopeless helpless teenager is useless because as an adult you can go out and rent your own place if that is what you you crave to feel what it would feel like to have your own space without you know your mother there because i am not there most of the time most of the time is either him into this mansion or he's in the mansion down in west Milan. but if you feel that you know it is still too much family for comfort you can migrate you can go to canada do like what your sister do because it teaches you something that adults need to learn to know how to appreciate when they're given something or when um they accomplish a goal because it would they would learn that it was not easy it's hard it is hard putting it together it is hard keeping up to my other peers around me who are in the same situation with me where we have to start off with nothing and work our way up to have something because the child did not appreciate having what the parents have to learn how to manage it carefully join with the parent and help help out like how i did with my mother i gave her that choice i can leave when i finish studying and feel independent enough to say i am gonna go out and start my own thing and whatever because i have stayed in the business from 18 from i graduated high school from my dad died i have worked under you following your tutelage 
as well as my little salary I get, I would pay for night classes and brushing up on my skills to learn how to help you in the business. So therefore, because I was there helping my mother in the business, I was able to accomplish things for myself and feel comfortable that I was that backbone support to make her have what she has today. Because without me, none of this would have been possible. If I had run off and migrated like the other siblings did, who would my mother have to call on to? Chrissy, go get this for me. Chrissy, go do this. I'm teaching you this. I'm teaching you that. You understand? So therefore, because my mother was able to have me as her partner when my dad died in business, she was able to accomplish most, much things 20 odd years later when he, he has been dead and gone. You understand? And because we work so hard together as a team, whichever partners we got, if I got another husband, if she got another husband, we were able to hold our float together while the husbands were able to adjust and see if where they could fit in into the family with a two women that they love. It's as simple as that. So as an adult, we're all free to make our own choices and do as we want. We don't have to listen to a parent telling you what to do if you don't want to. It's your choice. No, because I was a little smart ass, I knew that, well, if my mother brought me into the world and now my dad is dead and my dad is no more my dad and it's only me and her now, then it's survival for both of us. We have to figure out how to survive in the world. She is mourning the loss of her husband who has been a support for her all her life. And I am mourning the loss of my father who I believe was a support for me all my life. So therefore, at 18, I was basically on my own and I had to choose, do I want to listen to my mother or not? Yeah? I didn't listen to her all the time because, you know, when I chose my first husband, she wasn't for it. She was like, oh, no, 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 no. That's going to give you a harder time and you're not accustomed to it because we grow you up so pampered and we're always giving you this and giving you that. And, you know, to now we're on our own and you're on our own. You're not going to be able to, man I mean, bear you in mind, you know, at 18, I was weighing 100 pounds. I was so skinny and tiny <laughs> and I'm under five feet tall so I could understand why she would worry about me being you know have to be on my own and be married to somebody who wouldn't be able who she feels wouldn't be able to provide for me the way that she and my dad no oh, I forgot I can't shout <clears throat> My voice has become delicate. Menopause, 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 guys. <laughs> what a stress on me. Anyway, <laughs> I have to be trying to take it easy when I speak. I can't get too excited. I can't shout and I can't have too much noise around me or else I get these stress pains headache to calm down and remove myself from the environment. I guess I'm going back into my childhood stage of the elite environment, you know, going to my posh activities and going on this and that. Being into the raga 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 buffin world is like roughing it up too much on me. <laughs> but I do enjoy the music and the dance time and stuff. And you know, but the fights and the quarrels and the noise is kinda really doing my head in. Anyway, I'm just saying as an adult, at that time I had to make that choice if I wanted to listen to my mother or I wanted to just get on with my life. Well, when she had demonstrated to me the, the whole shebang of, oh, your dad is not your dad and you're crying, and the whole drama, then I, you know, get really mad and angry. I guess a mental chip into the brain. You know, some wire must have been disconnected. <laughs> and I say, all right, all right, I'm in love with this guy and I'm getting married and I'm starting my life and I'm starting my family. 
And so I got married to um, my daughter's father, and, and so came my daughter. And, you know, it was beautiful while it lasted. He taught me a lot because he was a mechanic, and, you know, I didn't know much about mechanic. I didn't know nothing at all. I'm like real girly girl, you know, ballerina. That's what I do, modeling, um, you know, the whole, what you call the aristocratic, eating with your knife and fork and the whole formalities of this and that. So at that time, I didn't know much. You know, I, even, I couldn't even cook as, you know, a full course meal and all that. So being married to him has taught me a lot because I even did cooking classes because my first attempt of cooking um, didn't go down too well, you know, in the kitchen. So I was in tears. I said, oh boy, what a responsibility I take on to myself at, at this age. You know, of my family going to die for hunger if I don't learn how to perfect this um, full course meal to serve us. So I did course in, in, in cooking, but as I said, you know, I disobeyed my mom and I got married and I started my family and stuff and it was beautiful. I have no regrets, sweethearts. It was such a lovely, lovely, lovely experience being married and having a child and, you know, but as I said, the stress of life, surviving, running business, because he managed to join me in my business and things go down and whatever. That one is a long story, another book, another year. But, you know, to cut the short is, story short, you have to make your own choices and, as an adult. You cannot expect your parents to make your decisions for you. If you're going to make your parents make a decision for you, there are going to be consequences that you're going to have because <coughs> if anything goes down, you're just not going to know what to do when the problem arises, how to fix it. So therefore, it is best that you can ask their opinion. Yeah? You can ask for their opinion. You can say, Mom, what do you think of this? You know, or if you have a dad, Dad, what do you think of this? What would you do? And then as an adult, you weigh out their answer of what they would do to what you would do, what you think you would do. And if you're still not sure, you can even ask a friend. That's what friends are for. You know, that's what friends are for. My friends were beautiful, you know. But I had a girlfriend. She, she helped me get married, set up, and we were, like, doing our thing. And... It was just such a beautiful memory. I'm like, memories, you must make memories in your life, you know, because when you get old, you have a story to tell. If you not do nothing, you don't have a story to tell. You're just boring, so, 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 what the hell? What a horrible life some of you guys live when I hear about your, your past, you know? It's so boring. But mine is just beautiful because... I lived an adult life. I make my choices. I hear your, your opinions and your suggestions and whatever. And I say, you know what? I'm following my heart in this one. And I followed my heart. I get a beautiful daughter and I run my business. I make money. I buy a truck. I buy a car. I buy this. Go bank, borrow, loan, carry on. I may live. May I live. So how can I live? What the hell is wrong with you? Malfunctioning? The slightest little thing is pure upset and anger and anger. What the use of all this anger? Life is beautiful. Life is full of joy. What? I used to party. I mean, when I was pregnant with my daughter, I jumped carnival, Jamaica carnival with pregnant belly. You know, my daughter, <laughs> when she come out, she's still a dance. She's full of life and energy. <laughs> but that's just how I am. I'm just living, even though I might have disappointments and upsets and sadness happen. But I don't take it to my heart where I am going to wallow in self-pity and just, if I could just die, I die. Pick up yourself and live. You understand? I'm seeing the hardship because of what COVID have let happen to our community, our world, you know, this whole pandemic, this COVID thing. And it's very painful. It's, it's sad. It's gloomy. But guess what? I have a spirit, I don't know if it's my Wilkins biology or my Salabi biology, but I have a kind of spirit that says, rise up, girl, rise up. 
<laughs> get up. Don't make your fears get the best of you. Make the most of your life and live it. You still have life. You still have things to do. And seeing those people come out and, you know, trying to interact and make things better. I'm like, go, girl, go. You're going to do it too. So when I see my son, I go on like, say, you know, I'm a 21 and I'm going like foolishness. You malfunction, baby. You malfunction because normal people don't go on like that as an adult. Because from you are an adult, you have your own brain to make your own choice to do what you want to do nobody's forcing you to do what you don't want to do the most we can do is guide you to the right path to make the right choices and give you support because you are our child you're my child and i would like to do that to make sure you're okay but if you know what that sweetheart me can hold your throat and open your mouth and shove it down it so if i'm asking you a simple little question like that you were the perfect child having my credit card to use from your a teenager you understand and i never have a problem some parents couldn't dare do that with their kid because their kids are untrustworthy they can't trust them that way i can trust you with anything you you are the perfect baby me leave my expensive vehicle at home and you don't even touch it for dry teeth it out and drive out you understand grandma leave our expensive vehicle and you want to say don't touch it and Uni is like the perfect kids in my eyes. So therefore, I don't see the need of the whole paranoia of, as an adult, no, you're, you're going to start malfunction and going on as if I am going to trouble you or I am troubling you or I am. It's most of the questions I ask is either yes or no answer. If you can't figure it out and it is too hard to answer or you don't remember, it, nothing no wrong if you say, just a minute, wait a minute, pardon me, mom just a moment i need time to think and to remember if i did you know do anything of the sort and um and 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 you know but i just can't remember now but what more can i do more than say okay if you are not doing as i expected you to continue doing that you that of which you have been doing all your life as a child growing up with me under my care in my roof in my house then the most i can do is just cut it off stop it and let you do what you want to do to experience your own experience to have your own story on your own nobody's forcing you to do it the whole thing is that everything i have is for my kids that's what i do i work for my kids i work for my husband my partner i work for my family who i know have my back if i know that you're doing something to provide for me i will do something to provide for you as a family member because that's just my gen genetics that's in my genes to know that as a female we are carers of each other yes i might not be able to care for everybody in the world although a lot of people call me mommy boss lady boss woman my boss my mom's you know because I try to care for as much as person as possible, but it is still my most um, serious responsibility to ensure that my kids are okay wherever they go in this life. Because I brought them here, I am alive, and because I am alive and I brought them here, then whatever work I put in, I make sure that there is enough also for them to receive some of it because the lord is gonna bless me and i will share my blessing with those around me who is appreciative of it who is thankful for it if you don't want it you say so you know it's no big deal i know what to do but nobody's forcing anybody to do what they don't want to do it's utter rubbish utter foolishness downright nonsense so you know I'm just saying, stop malfunction, right, Papa? If that's what you're doing, because I can't understand it. You're an adult. Adults do what adults do. Take care now. And have a good life if that's your choice, right? To be on your own and do as you like to experience it. Nothing wrong with it, right? That's your choice too. 
I just was enjoying the company and I just enjoy my son and I love him so much because he not give me no problem, baby. He's the perfect boy. Never give me an ounce of trouble. Only time I know him give me talking for try embarrass me is when him see other people around because him no one people know him so perfect. <laughs> him want to go and like say him is a badass rude boy, you know. So I'm like, all right, make it stay to yourself, but. I noticed you're malfunctioning today, so you can keep on doing what you're doing, but not to me. I will take away myself because that's it's not worth it. It's not worth me working up myself over it because I've lived my life already and I'm at the stage of retirement. By the time me reach 40, me knows it was time to retire because me finished um, JTS studies and as a female, 40 year old you're supposed to practically retire you're supposed to have done so much in your life and accomplished so much that life is supposed to be easy and when i finish the test, i said who me and i'm going into no classroom go work with them bad picnic them to torment me much less my children them is so good and perfect i never give me no stress much less me figure take up with other people picnic that is so rude especially when i see how them behave and things that me and them is size especially when they see how me is a midget and me short and skinny and maga I you know, me think me want nobody picnic and beat me, no way. So me know say from me finish study and me a forty and me accomplish what me need to accomplish. From me have a roof over my head, car to drive, food to eat. Me say thank you, Jesus, that's all I need to live comfortably. Me good. But me go and do some party. I go I go bust some dance and do some dance monkey dance monkey dance monkey dance for everybody. You know? So him just living his life, you know. Males, males are slow bloomers so when a woman might retire at 40 and 50 the men are retire at 60 and 70 you understand the men don't the men don't retire as quickly as women do but um and and then even if a woman might leave and get married by the time she's 18 19 a man know he would have uh, pulled off until he maybe 20 something or 20 you know to do those things some of them wait till later but me it's like if you're gonna start malfunctioning from now papa you might as well take on the world because maybe you're just a quick bloomer and you know know that you become in your adult stage because i was a slow bloomer and your dad was a slow bloomer so maybe you're a quick bloomer so go ahead jump into it because I had to I had to do it early because my dad died you don't have to do it early but if you want to because your mom is a is a um, retiree now and a, a cool down and and you feel that you need to take on the world then go ahead baby I have no problem with it your life one life to live make the most of it you got some memories to share you don't want to share your memories with your mommy all the time because that's supposed to be boring i suppose maybe that's what you're thinking why you're just on this silence and this dumbstruck thing behavior malfunctioning like them obeyed you so later take care of yourself people i'm watching the news seeing what is becoming of america and their their um donald trump scenario what are something donald trump is not accepting his defeat too lightly but um but him doing recounting the votes and all those dramas but such is life and everybody lose lose gracefully you know some people when them bowing out or losing them have to put on a whole scenario them have to show how you know them not take it too nice not as if as if there's anybody who wins all the time if you're playing a game you have to expect to lose sometimes you understand that's something my mom and my dad teach me growing up that is not all the time you're gonna win sometimes you win because you want to lose at another thing you want to sometimes you lose because you want to win at another game now if you're playing a game of in life and you win at this game suppose okay let's say he wants to put his family back together or relax and you know have a have a a, a peaceful you know 
later years with his family bonding or moments or whatever yet in order to win that to take on that challenge of family life you can't be president of the united states of america so therefore you have to lose something to win something so if you're gonna win your family you're gonna have to lose at the presidency you understand so that's just an example i'm showing you in case some people is wondering um what i meant by you have to win some to lose some right because in life that's just it if you're gonna start a business and run a business and then at the same time you have something else that is going to distract you from doing that like maybe you have a partner now you want to do business and your partner wants to be a lawyer or a doctor or you know some kind of educational professional a teacher or something like that you can't win at that partnership and at the same time trying to do a successful business because that partnership to be a a, a, a top educator you're gonna have to maybe even travel the world while to be a successful business person you're gonna have to put out that those efforts and those years and those times in your business so to be an educator it, it is gonna cause for you to study further and to go around and, and write books and promote them and you know if you're gonna make, make it to the top of the, 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 the educating the society scenario so it's it's two different things so you have to know which you want what you want to lose at to win at wh where the priority is which is most important and you choose you, you make wise choices you know you prioritize because that's the only way you're gonna know what which one you're gonna let go and as i said lose at you know and the good thing when you're losing something is that you choose to lose it you know when you lose it by surprise or unexpectedly then it's more painful because you're like but that's not the one i wanted to do no you were the ball and carry on the whole dramatic and the whole hurt of whatever but it's good when you can make up your mind to know which one to lose at to gain at the other so that's just it yeah can't have it all choices life is a gamble no life choice is a surety just remember that no life choice is a surety everything is a gamble yeah it's a bet you're gonna bet your life on it to get it yeah and some people all die and still don't get it <laughs> so make sure when you're going after certain things you can actually get it <laughs> and you're making a wise choice when you're betting your life on it right don't be a fool and don't be silly don't chase dreams that is unrealistic and is not for you which is not part of your destiny some families are born to be successful some families have special people in it that God touched to come out of it successfully so it doesn't matter what is happening the challenges that that family has going on with them that particular person that God puts within that family will forever triumph come out as a triumphant successor so no matter what is happening family could be trying to hurt them rape them abuse them lock them up into a room for until them all 18 19 sometimes you have some family I hear some stories you know and some parents cruel you know and step parents cruel they lock up their kids for all 24 hours a day you know them the one no man see them nobody must see them they must be locked up into there and believe me the lord still <laughs> pulled about by the time they reach 18 they are so surprised the rest of the family members is so surprised to see how that particular child 
come out to be a total success story. And the rest of them left in their poverty, still into them suffering and torment them one another. And them can't figure out how did that one get out successfully still. And that one was the one we lock up in the house and it's so full and it's care, not that it this and that this and that. So therefore there's hope for everybody and God chooses and knows who he chooses to become that successor within the family or if it's a whole family to become that successor in life. Because a God said the last word for everybody. God said the last word. Hey Marlon, good to see you, Papa. You're good, bless up to you too, bless up. Good to see you peeping in on me. And I was just riding down, but you know, I am around and I hope you're okay. And thank you for your bless up. Okay, I appreciate. So we don't know what the, 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 the future holds for people, but if you um, just keep the faith, and and keep praying and when the challenge is hit don't despair don't despair even if it's one step at a time little by little you have to get there you know you have to get there you have to come out of it because god will do that he will pull you through no matter what the situation is so nothing is as bad as it seems everything is beautiful but it's just how the particular person will perceive what is happening because each person perceives things differently and if you're in a life living and when you look on it the people around you are miserable even if you want to be happy and you're happy it start brush off on you too you know so the only way you're going to find back your joy and be happy is if you take yourself away from it and you can be joyful and happy once you find your own niche something you like to do something you enjoy doing and you're doing it you understand but your brain have to put you in that scope to say i like to do this because sometimes if you don't touch on certain things you don't even know what you like to do i know my son loves me and he worries about me all the time but i am like why worry about a person who has already accomplished most of what she needs to accomplish all her life it makes no sense what you need to do is make yourself accomplish things set goals for yourself and when you set goals for yourself and you're working towards it you have you wouldn't be worrying about if this person is okay if they are accomplishing their goals and I can't live my life because mommy is not all right mommy is fine mommy will be fine because it's one life to live and I've grown two beautiful kids of which I'm very proud of they never give me no trouble comparing to what I see other parents going through with their kids so me call my kids the perfect children you understand and to see you now as an adult yes you're going to have some kind of worry because now you're saying you know you see some the majority of people out there some of them is in so much impoverishedness they are so poor and it's scary you're like how do you live amongst poor people i'm like that's just how life is the whole world have rich and poor in it in america is the same thing ask them how do they live amongst rich people or poor people so if you're gonna think that jamaica is the only one with rich and poor people and that divide and and you're gonna worry about it you 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 make it a fool of yourself because in america that's a bigger place and they have bigger celebrities and rich people and they're up and about every day with the same poor people them around them and them now make it trouble them so i don't know how you now are gonna sit down and fret over another poor person or another rich person you're gonna sit down and fret about what a rich person is doing with their money or fret about what a poor person is doing with their money or whatever just live just fret about what you have 
Think about what you have and make it work for you. And be happy with it. Because if you're not happy with it, you can't get no more of it. You're going to lose whatever you have. If you can't be happy with what you have, why give you no more? And all I, all I see in life, you know, if you are living, you will see yourself multiplying. You will see things happening to you where you're getting more, you're getting bigger and better as you're growing. For instance, you might have a thousand dollars. Yeah? If you keep that thousand dollars in your pocket at home with you, it remains a thousand dollars. Yeah? If you keep it in the bank, you get 2% interest or 1% interest on it, on a thousand dollars. So you get what? A dollar each year or a month. So it go. So that means you're going to be $1,001, $1,002 richer, yeah? But tell me something. If you use $1,000 and buy a bag of sweet tea, hmm? $1,000 and you buy a bag of sweet tea, and you're going to sell that sweet tea, yeah? How much are you going to sell that sweet tea for? You go and sell that bag of sweetie for something like because you have to put on a profit on it, you know. You're not gonna sell it back for the same thousand dollars, you know. You might sell it back for a thousand and fifty dollars. So tell me, you put the money into the bank and you get a thousand one dollar. You buy the sweetie and you sell it back. Yeah, you get a thousand and fifty dollar. Which one is more? Which one is growing? Which one is making more money? You see, because the pandemic hit our world, everybody is frazzled. How do I make money now? And it is so hard now. And we're going to die now and everything. But guess what? It's an opportunity to start over. And it is an opportunity to help somebody to understand what to do to get something going for them too. Because everybody now has to find a way of surviving and making money. So... It's not just poor people or rich people in the same shoe. It's everybody in, in, in different shoes. It's everybody in the same shoes because everybody now has to start over. Rich people, poor people, everybody was affected. Everybody's business was affected. So don't think that because you're rich, you didn't feel some kind of repercussion of losses to your business of which you're going to have to put things back in place to get it going again you understand so the the, the key to making a business work is that you're going to have to spend money to make it happen there's no business that works without doing something if it's not money you spend then you're going to have to spend time because using your time, your talent, you can plant something, you can farm something. And if you farm something and you sell that, you make a money. All right, look how much people in Jamaica are addicted to, to weed. You plant up weed and sell it back, you make money just off of the soil. They so. so I'm puzzled, I'm frazzled. What am I going to sell a brook again? Tell me. <laughs> I'm really trying to figure it out because there's so much scope in making money that, you know, yes, we can broke because if you don't do nothing, you're going broke. But if you do something, you may have money. And I know nothing. So do something, yeah? Because money is there to make and that's what this world, this whole world is doing. Yeah? Donald Trump do it. America do it. Everybody does it. So keep on doing it. Okay, babies? And um, the new generation, the 21-year-olds, how to make money is you got to do business. Turn it over, turn it over. Sit down and read book, read book, read book. It just build your brain. Yeah? Interacting with money. 
on a regular basis spending it bringing it in investing it and you know then you see turnover then you see grow and then you realize we oh, value so much already yes the years pass off so fast and it flies so fast and you'll be surprised to see how much you can gain even within a year yeah but you gotta do something first you are the one that has to put a start to it to make yourself grow richer for the better okay so you guys have a good day now have a good evening i've gone back to watching my tv to see what donald trump because to me you know he's just such a little smarty pants <laughs> the, the guy he pisses me off he angers everybody he traumatizes us but at the same time he makes us laugh he makes newspapers sell money sell sell papers so newspapers and make money with his whole dramas i mean who would have think him using his brain hard to to give people challenges to think how to beat him you know because as he's saying he's not easy to beat him never lose nothing so when you beat donald trump you're really good you know because him really putting up a fight him putting up a fight guys and 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 him using him brain him thinking as a business because him know the government is a business thing you know so him using his business practical knowledge for for um hang on to what is happening all the teethiness if him can go on with it him would do it too i don't put it past him because you know he's he he will do those little tricks too but it look like joe biden beat him to it and 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 is overriding him and he feels threatened so you know he, he not going down so easy because joe biden now have some team of people that really I give Donald a run for his, his, his seat, you know? So I'm glad that they're actually putting up that fight and no make him get it so easy. Oh no man. Put it up you know, let him know say he's in a position of good big standing and him need to appreciate it and stop abusing the American people and, and look how many other people would have loved to get that position to love people and take good care of them and take good care of the country and stuff and he's doing things like that so you know i am just watching it because it's it coming like a little movie to me you know seeing what they're going on with to keep to keep him out of it and he's trying to hold on to it so not an easy road i tell you see the glamour and you get it so you think a better rose may say who feels it knows hey don't laugh after me that know the word i laugh after me with that one but i can't do it <laughs> take care now love enough <laughs>